I am speaking today with Professor Christopher Tang of UCLA. He holds the Edward W. Carter Chair in Business Administration. Professor Tang, welcome. Thank you for having me. I want to talk about some of the lessons that we've learned so far from the pandemic, especially from the standpoint of healthcare and hospital supply chains. But let's first of all start with just a general question. How can the country get back on its feet? Well, I think the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, is a wake-up call. And I think that's for a nation with uh, plenty abundance of um, materials. And this time, the shortage of PPE and ventilators actually make a lot of people to rethink whether our current supply chain is working or not. So I think that will really push people to think that, well, things are not working. It's obvious. And we need to take it back to rethink how we can do better so that if something happened like this again, we will not encounter the same problem again. Yeah. Well, the short-term solution, as we've seen, is to get industries that don't normally make that equipment turn around and start producing it. Automotive manufacturers making ventilators and stuff like that. But that is not, that can't possibly be a permanent solution. We need to find new sources of masks and PPE and ventilators from trusted producers. So where do we, what do we do? Do we bring that home? Do we increase domestic production? Do we go to other countries? What are some of the things we can do to ensure steady supply going forward? Well, I think there are a couple of things we can do. One is the immediate term is basically to some, do some stockpiling. In that case, we have some sufficient materials. Second, I think that is also we need to uh, diversify our supply base. Uh, I think currently, I think that most of the PPEs, especially like the masks and the gowns, they make in China. And given the ongoing trade war with the, with, between China and United States, and I think United States need to think about a uh, potential alternative source for these kind of materials. And third, in the medium term or long term, I think it's about time for United States to rethink maybe to bring some of the manufacturing, some of the supply chain back to the United States or take advantage of the trade agreements with Mexico and Canada, such that we have a regional supply chain. So in the case, we can actually can rebuild the manufacturing sectors within the North America. So I guess you could argue that this is perhaps a positive to the extent that it makes us realize that we are overly dependent on foreign sources of manufacturing, right? And that maybe not just in healthcare and hospital supplies, but maybe in a larger sense, we might start bringing some, back, some stuff back domestically because of the lessons learned here? Absolutely. I think it's about time because I think this time we also realize that a lot of drugs, that the ingredients, they actually make in China. So for example, would be like penicillin and also ibuprofen, all these products they make in China. If there is any disruption, uh, then in the case, we will have a problem with getting the uh, the drugs of uh, make it available to our uh, fellow Americans. So I think it's about time for America to work together, the public sectors and the private sectors to come up with some kind of a plan such that we can rebuild the capabilities, the competences, so that the United States can build this kind of capability to produce this kind of products in the long run. Do we need any kind of a change in regulations to facilitate these changes? Absolutely. So I think right now the Senate is pushing for a uh, domestic supply chain oversight about all the drugs importing from other countries, United States. Second, and I think that it is also a golden opportunity for the, for the governments and the private sectors like pharmaceutical companies to work with universities to really rebuild the capabilities to provide the incentives, provide subsidies to get more companies to reconsider, to establish at least some capabilities to produce in the United States. Besides medical medicine or medical supplies, I think that for example, with the like rare earth, I think that we're overly depending on China. I think it's about time for United States to develop better, cleaner, more efficient, extraction processes in the United States to get the rare earth materials. 
You mentioned working with universities. That's interesting because, of course, universities have a long history of working with government and the private sector to develop the necessary R&D in all kinds of areas of business and science. Do you think that universities have an even bigger role to play going forward? Absolutely. Because right now, I think the funding from the government has gone down. Besides NIH, the other sectors like engineering, like manufacturing, is really, uh, really depleted over the years. So I think it's about uh, time for the government to rethink about what is a national agenda to ensure that there is a secure supply of critical products, such as drugs, such as PPEs, that's the life-saving materials, such that the America can, can, can feel more secure again. Mm -hmm. What about reshoring versus nearshoring? You mentioned Mexico as one possibility or other places here in the Western Hemisphere. What percentage, I'm not asking you for a hard number, obviously, but just give me a rough idea of like how much of this stuff might reasonably come back to the United States versus a nearshore situation where it's close but not within our borders? Uh, depending on the product types. Uh, for certain types of products, like IC manufacturing, that's uh, uh, Intel is getting subsidy from the government to actually uh, expand the operations in the U.S., for the integrated circuit manufacturing, the process is mostly chemical processes. But I think that's as long as you've uh, complied with the EPA regulations, and I think it's easier. For some, for some other processes, it will be much more difficult. So for example, for API, the active uh, ph pharmaceutical ingredients, the, uh, the production process, it is much more uh, environmental unfriendly. So in the case, maybe it's easier to establish some kind of facilities in Mexico uh, to produce it and ship it back in the United States. But that does not uh, preclude innovations. Right now, a lot of companies, including pharmaceutical companies, they're thinking about how to develop new manufacturing processes that is clean and that can comply with FDA and EPA and also without going through the requirements of the API. They call continuous manufacturing processes. Do we have time, Professor Tang? There's a lot of concern about a second wave hitting us this fall or this winter within this calendar year. And yet some of the things that you are talking about, supply chains don't turn on a dime. These things are gonna, are gonna take time. Can we get this, get ourselves together, especially in the medical supplies and hospital supplies supply chain side in time for the next wave, assuming that that happens? Very good point. I think for the short term, we need to do some stockpiling because, uh, for example, for masks, for the regular mask, uh, I think manufacturing capabilities is available in the US. So right now, some companies are helping out, but not for the N95 mask that the healthcare workers need because it requires a non-woven materials that the United States does not have the process. But that process can be developed in a few months if they can actually uh, really work well together with the 3M. So I think right now the U.S. government has a contract with 3M to produce some N95 masks in the United States because we need to have that capability. Yeah. Do you think that maybe some structural changes need to be made in hospital supply chains? We've seen a lot of changes in recent years in terms of hospital purchasing patterns and the, the grouping together of hospital organizations into much larger entities for purposes of buying product which you would think leads to some degree of deficiency, but also maybe there are some downsides to that too. Do you think there are changes needed in that supply chain in order to facilitate the things we're talking about today? Absolutely. Before, I think that the United States is a free market. There is really no, uh, no requirement to share the information, to collect information, and also co to collaborate, to co coordinate. So I think after this pandemic, I think a lot of agencies and the hospitals and the state's governments realize that they need to work together to actually pull the resource together so that they can, they can actually can trace what is needed, who needs it, when it's needed, where, and mm -hmm. also the what is being available. Then they can come up with better coordination plan and also deploy the, uh, the materials and the resource more effectively rather than competing with each other. 
Well, let's hope the lessons are actually learned on a long-term basis and we don't have a short memory and just go back to the way things were when things supposedly settle down. But uh, Professor Chris Tang, thank you so much for being with us today to explain some of the things that hospital and medical supply chains, as well as supply chains in general, need to be doing as lessons learned from the pandemic. Thank you very much for talking to, talking to me today. Thank you.